I'm going to give a real brief overview of routing. I am not going to go into the deep parts of how to actually write all this stuff. That's going to be for another video. If you, uh, That's not my style. My style is typically to create something at a high level so you get an overview of what you're trying to do, see the whole holistic picture, and then break it down into the more complicated pieces. How did I actually accomplish this? And so for now, we're basically just going to show some of the capabilities. We had a previous video where we showed you can set up your sources and your destination in Cribble. So you get your data coming in and you're sending your data out. Now we're going to set up what is Cribble going to do with your data? If you just set an input and you set an output, a source and a destination, it's just gonna pass that data on and not touch it at all. And that, that doesn't really do anything for you. You really want the ability to manipulate the data. That's where uh, this log stream product from Cribble becomes really powerful. So let's talk about data routes. Data routes is a simple concept of the Splunk it, data is coming through as a pipeline. You start, anytime you have a big pipe, you start with a, lots and lots of water going down the pipe. And as you get towards your house, the pipes just continue to get smaller and smaller as they filter off content. And that's the principle here. All of my logs, my Zeek sensors, my Corelight sensors, my Suricata, my Windows event logs, my PyHole, my PFSense, all of those things are sending in all these logs. And now the routing is going to take those logs and do different things based off filters and start to filter out some of the data. And you can see here that as a general rule, the internal indexes of my data, 54% of my data is internal indexes. Uh, ITSI metrics is about 28%. My core light logs make up about 12% of my logs. Anyway, I can see what percentages of my logs are being filtered off at each area. I can see I've right now my Suricata is not working. I'm not getting any of those logs through. I'm not grabbing any syslog. Uh, my pie hole appears not to be sending data in. And so I can see first what data isn't making it. And like, for example, my Windows event logs are here. That's because I only have, I have my laptop and my laptop's case is shut and it's gone to sleep over in the corner. So I'm not getting any Windows event logs. I can quickly see here what logs are coming in, what logs are not. That is a great uh, graphical feature. And then we can see here, we open this up, core light logs. I've got a filter. It's written in uh, using JavaScript. They use the double equals here. So it looks for, hey, if you're index is core light, I want you to apply some rules. And it's going to put it down a pipeline. And my pipeline happens to be core light data. You get all the options of all the different uh, pipelines you've built. You can use custom pipelines from that Cribble sends with their product, or you can build your own. We're not going to discuss building pipelines here, but we'll view them in just a minute. I've got my output. Output was set by, in that very beginning, I showed you in the video. You could set it to devnull, meaning, hey, anything that's of index core light, I don't even want, just trash it, send it to the garbage. And you could pick that option, or I could say, hey, send it to Splunk server. And that's what I've done. So this is sending it on to my Splunk indexer. And I can put descriptions in there, and then I can finalize the date. Remember, it says a pipeline, you, when, you, when something meets the criteria, typically you filter it off. But you may want to do another workflow process on it. So if you want to do another workflow process, you, do, you take the final and you turn it off so it becomes no. But in my case, when I have a core light log, I want to make my modifications and it's not going to go through any other processes. So I finalize the data. So anything that meets this criteria is just going to get filtered right off the out of the giant pipe and be sent on its way. So let's go uh, let's go walk through what I've done with core light logs. So if I come over to processing and I'm going to go pipelines, we're looking for the pipeline core light data. And here it is. We, the Corelight use, uh, Cribble uses the term functions, and you can see different functions. And I don't know why I have these all turned off. It must have been from another video I was doing. Oh, I'm going to turn them all on. And I can turn on different functions. I can add new functions. There are a lot of functions you can search for, uh, and we'll cover functions in another video, but I'm just going to briefly show it to you. I, I can take all these functions, it's going to go through these things, and we can actually see the data. The e, What really makes this cool is I can go look at what my changes are on live. So, for example, I'm going to go grab uh, some sample data. I'm going to go capture some logs. I want to grab everything the last 10, I'm going to look at last 10, I'm going to look at 10 seconds worth of logs coming across my system, and I'm going to catch the first 10 of them. And we'll see what comes in. Oh, I got a con log there, 
some more con logs, got an NTP log. Um, that's good enough to work with. I'll make that work. I'll save as a sample file, and I'm going to call this YouTube Corelite. And we'll hit save. And now I can see those 10 files here. And this is what they're going in when it goes in to the pipeline. And then when I hit out, I can see what it's done after it went through the pipeline. And so that is a really cool feature here. So let's look at this in, in action. If I take, I can do a parser and I can extract fields. I can take the raw fields and I can parse them out. And after I do that, I can rename fields. If you're not a fan of these dots, they drive me nuts. ID.orgh, Splunk doesn't like the dots. You can manually fix that in Splunk or you can just flat out rename the field and say, you know what? I don't want to send this data to uh, Splunk as ID.orgh. I want to go in as the source IP. So let's just hit save, show this in process. I the reason I have to hit save is because all these things were turned off. When I hit save, all of a sudden, look, all these green things are the changes. I used to have a big raw file. I've modified it, and I want to send this data back in. I'm looking at um, source IP, destination IP, dest port, all that's gone. If I look at the infield, these fields didn't even exist because they were written in key value pairs. When I parsed it, they became other fields. If I t the ID out or, or JH, you can see that here, that's where that field is. It doesn't exist anymore. It's been renamed as source IP, destination IP. I can do eval statements in Splunk right there. I can say, you know what? I don't want to rename. I want a UID field. The reason I want a UID field, I want to take this UID field and call it flow ID. I want to make my stuff uh, my data coming in SIM compliant. I don't want to do that on the fly in Splunk. I want it already coming in SIM compliant. So I'll just eval these fields and now look what I've got. I have, I've got, if I have a UID, then I'm going to get a, I'm going to get those different fields coming back in. Um, I'm going to get bytes in, bytes out, etc. And then we can go Show, we can serialize the fields, meaning we're going to put them back in. This is how I change my, uh, what goes back in is my raw fields. I can rename logs. Um, I can rename answer to be answers. And I'm setting it, but I only want that to be in the Corelite DNS. Don't bother to do that on the other fields. I don't like this Q type name. I want it to be query type. So it's SIM compliant. So I can do filter rules based off the source type, etc. And I can do more there. So you just keep going down and you can make your changes to the logs and you can actually see them in process. And so I can make all these changes. Um, you can use lookups to uh, add data in here so that you're not doing an automatic lookup in Splunk. You're actually already adding that data in. And so you can control all of this stuff right here from Cribble and you can make changes. And I'll just show an example here. Let's do this. I'm going to take a, I'm going to rename my local org right now it's actually let's go miss bytes and i'm going to call it so right now we see the miss bytes field and i'm going to call it youtube example i hit save and it's not going to do that because it's not DNS logs. So let's let's go grab this up here where it's Corelite con. We're going to do the eval here, and I'm just going to do an eval statement. I'm going to do add a field, and I'm going to make a uh, the name is going to be YouTube filled filed. Sure, YouTube filed, and we're going to call it, and it's going to come from the missed bytes filled. We could do a whole bunch of other things. You can do value expressions, JavaScript, things like that, addition, subtraction, cool things like that. And but anyway, if I hit that, saved. Now I have the YouTube file filled right there. It fills in. I got all the fields I want. I can modify and, and change things. It is an amazing capability. Um, again, you can 
one of the things you can do, you, if things hit a certain condition, you can just drop them. It's, it's a lifesaver when it comes to uh, handling your logs. And the beauty is, instead of messing with a config file and saying, will this work? Does this change? Restart the uh, Splunk instance and see if it's uh, done the proper changes. You can actually take a sample file and see what it would actually do to your logs. So it is an amazing product. I recommend it. Um, again, I, I can't speak highly enough about Cribble. It is, it's made my ability to handle and manipulate logs so much easier. I can do almost everything I do in Cribble by working on the config files, but it is, they're not as robust. There are, I get, it takes a lot longer to uh, manage and boy, the troubleshooting is a big pain. Um, here I can see immediately my results, know what's gonna happen. It's, it's a, just a, it's just awesome. Anyway, I hope this helps you. If you like this, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm continuing to roll out products. I'm gonna talk about Cribble more and more and teach you guys how to use it. Um, Anyway, hope you hope you like this and hope this helps you on your trip from becoming a lame analyst to a an awesome analyst.